This video I'm going to explain you how to explore Zurich on a budget. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. However, it's really easy to get around and surprisingly don't even have to spend that much money. This here is the Zentral, which is not exactly the center of Zurich, but it's at the Limatke. And here you'll have a lot of trams that will be passing through. There's also a lot of cars, so make sure you watch out. I'm now going to take you to this funicular, it's called Polybahn, and that one's going to take you up to the first lookout point. This here is the entrance to the Polybahn to take the funicular to go up to the first lookout point. By the way, the ride is not free, you will have to get a ticket. You can just purchase it here, but it was also good to know if you actually have a ticket for short distances. If it's still valid in the time, then you can actually just take that one. My suggestion is to go to the very front, because this is an outdoor balcony and from there you'll have definitely a great view on your ride up. Just arrived at the top and now what you have here is ETH Zurich. And this is the best university on the continent of Europe. It has been like this since years. And it's actually world famous because a lot of famous scientists have studied here. Well, definitely most important to mention here would be Albert Einstein who studied here and he did also a lot of his work on the theory of relativity. Myself, I studied at ETH in 2007 until 2012. I enrolled into material science, it was really good. But yeah, mostly I didn't spend my time here at the main building. I spent my time at Hönkoberg, which is in this direction. Now anyway, this place is not only about the University of ETH, it's also about the view, because here we're at the Politerrasse. Now let's talk about the view. Here we have the best view you can get in Zurich, in my opinion, because the old city is quite close to you. Behind this is Mount Uetliberg, then over there the Lake of Zurich. And you probably also may notice the many churches. This is because of the reformator Zwingli, who was dreaming Zurich becoming a Protestant Rome. And yeah, just really love this view during any time of the year. It's also very nice during winter. And what's the best? It's actually free to come up here, unless if you take the funicular. But even that is not going to cost you much. This here is the main hall of the main building. ETH Hauptgebäude. Look at this architectural wonder. Wow. Actually, I've been passing this hall many, many times during my first years because I often had to come here for my math lectures, especially calculus, which is often said to be the most difficult lecture during the first years. I always had lecture in these auditories over there. But yeah, let's talk a bit more about this university. A lot of famous scientists have studied here. I mentioned already Albert Einstein, but then also Wolfgang Pauli and even Otto Stern. Many of these people have actually won Nobel Prizes. And 
because of that ETH is very famous up to this day. Just next to ETH Zurich is the University of Zurich, which was built only after a popular referendum. You can see that when you enter the university, it's written durch den Wille des Volkes, which means because of the people's will. Yeah, it's really practical that both universities are just next to each other, and what's even better, they actually work together. I'm now going to take it to the Niederdörfli, the best preserved part of the old city of Zurich. And it's really easy to reach because you can just walk downstairs from ETH and University of Zurich. This here is the entrance to the old city of Zurich, the Niederdörfli. And besides me we have the central library. The past was the library to go in the city of Zurich. Definitely in here you can find a lot of books, but probably nothing about how to create a horcrux. Now you can see this part is quite crowded because that's like the very touristy side of Zurich. But yeah, if you look around, there are a lot of really beautiful buildings. Switzerland never had any royals, but what we do have still up to today are guilds. And they have these houses here in Zurich. Let's say the guilds in this city are still the most prominent. Some of these houses you can actually explore from the inside. So this one here is actually able to be visited, but maybe just don't take too many photos because otherwise you might close it down. So when you're in the Needle Delphi, I keep actually telling you that in most of my videos you should always explore the side alleys because there you can discover a lot of nice things. This here is the Spiegelgasse, which in the past has been the home to a couple of political refugees. Zurich has always been open for that, up to today. Here, for example, Georg Büchner used to live. He was a famous writer. He also wrote the book Wojciech. But then also Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov lived here. He's better known under the name of Lenin, who was the founder of the Russian Revolution. He used to live right in this apartment here for a little bit more than one year until 2nd of April in 1917. Now Lenin, he really liked Zurich. He studied a lot in the Central Library. He could write down all his theories and also speak freely about his ideology. In fact, had a lot of communist talks down there. So he also met his fellow revolutionary friend Leo Trotsky. And then there's also a very interesting fact. Lenin, he had a savings account at the Cantonal Bank of Zurich. He had there five Swiss francs when he left to Russia. And that bank account is still active. He now has 12.85 Swiss francs due to the interest. And the Cantonal Bank of Zurich did not want to close down this bank account because of its historical significance. This here is the Neumarkt, the new market. I consider that kind of being a little bit the center of the Niederdörfli. Definitely very nice with this photomotive of this red house and the clock tower in the background. This here is the Rindermarkt, 
here you have a lot of nice shops, but then you also have some guild houses like this one here. And yeah, now I'm going to take you to the Grand Minster, Großminster, which is the main Protestant church in the city of Zurich. This here is the Großminster plot. And here Zwingli has proclaimed the Swiss Reformation. This here is the principal church of Zurich. It used to be a Catholic church back in the old days. And since Zwingli, this has been a Protestant church. Here, just in front of the Großminster, is another really nice viewpoint. We're now very close to the old city of Zurich, and here we have the Limmat Key, then St. Peter, and the Frau Münster. These are very important churches. St. Peter has the largest clock, and the Frau Münster has the beautiful windows from Marc Chagall. And important for you tourists if you like to buy souvenirs. The shop is really easy to find. We just have here the bridge to Frau Münster and on this side of the river the shop is just here. They have basically everything you may be looking for like Switzerland t-shirts and then a lot of magnets and a lot more things. This here is the Münster Square. There are a couple of interesting things to see. First of all, this fountain. Then this blue house, Zunfthaus zur Waag. It's one of the Gilders' houses. And then here, that's very important to mention, that's the Frau Münster Church. It's one of the main Protestant churches in Zurich and it's very well known for its Chagall windows. You can see them at the interior. The entrance costs five Swiss francs. In Zurich there are a lot of chocolate shops, so you should definitely visit one of them. This one just behind me, that one is called Toy Shop. They sell very nice chocolates. And then otherwise you can also go to Lind or Lederhof. They're my other two favorites. Here we are at the church of St. Peter. It's the one with the largest clock in Zurich. And this is basically the most important thing you need to know about it. This is another thing that is really interesting about this place. There are actually a couple of nice alleys. The first one would be this here. But then the other one is quite historic. This alley here just next to St. Peter's Church is very interesting. It's called Thermengasse. Let's go and take a look. So this is the alley of archaeology. <laughs> so the former thermal bath used to be here. There was a very long time ago during the Roman and Celtic times. It was around 1800 years ago and it's just all right below here, the remnants of it.
So this here is the Rennweg, which is really nice during the summer because they put all the Canton flags, which makes this very colorful. And this is also a good place to dine at, especially at a cafe called Honold, which is my favorite tea room. It's really easy to find because it's just a place of Starbucks. But in my opinion, I find it's better and it's even cheaper. From the Rennweg it's really easy to reach the Bahnhofstraße because it's simply just in front. This is what people call the most important shopping boulevard of the city. Now going to take the boat. This here is the restaurant Storchen, and here you have one of the stops. So you can go further front to the Bellevue. I'm going to show you some more interesting places in this wonderful city. Now here at the Zürichhorn, that's the southernmost boat stop in the city. Now I'm going to show you a little bit around. I'm also going to take you to the Chinese garden, which was a gift from Zurich's partner city, Kunming. You can see here, there's a lot going on. There's many people who spend their time here during summer. Now just behind me here, that's the Chinese garden. Let's go and take a look. Entrance is by the way free. So this here is the Chinese garden. I really love to come here because it's very quiet. Very great atmosphere present in here. And especially during summer it's nice because there's a lot of shade and it feels very cooling. Furthermore, admission is free, so what more do you want in very expensive Zurich? So just here next to the Rathaus Bridge, I would like to show you one of my favorite passages. It's not very known among the tourists, but the locals usually use it. As you can see, Zurich is really exciting. It's actually quite easy to explore it on a budget. This was already my second tour. Now if you're interested to watch tour one, then I invite you to watch this video. Otherwise, if you want to see other Swiss cities, then let's meet over there.